is Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Hope everybody is having a pretty decent day. Look, I'm going to get right into this. Um, on my way to the gym, had a pretty decent day. It's been crazy uh, for me and my family, but uh, you know me, if you're still breathing, you're still in the fight. Um, you know the routine. If you believe in the work that I do, if you believe that I make a difference in what I do, that what I do is necessary and needed for the black family, for black children, especially for black boys, um, and you believe that, I need your support. You know the routine. In the description box, the post box, wherever you're going to watch this, there's going to be uh, a link that you can go to and donate or you can give through the organization's cash app account that information is in there as well um, there's been so much going on that it's easy to get lost in everything uh, everybody's buzzing about the doom Black Panther, Wakanda Forever movie, and I mean, the reviews span the gamut. Everything from it's a, a dope movie, it's empowering, till it has misandry in it, till it, they, they need to definitely recast the child and all that. I haven't made up in my mind whether I'm going to go to pay to go to the movie to see it or wait till it starts streaming um, it's not really so much a political statement it is right now there are other things that I just really want to give my time and attention to but I mean there's a lot of things to unpack I've talked to a couple of people I'm trying now uh, to get in contact with uh, Tony Lindsay you I know who's a filmmaker and has a different perspective and I want to get his input and then take on it. Well, I know what the basics is because he posted about it and it's pretty much what I thought, but I want to talk to him on a more deeper level because he's extremely pro-black. So I want to get his input on that, but hey, here's the thing what I can tell you is what I always say we find ourselves in precarious situations in last place uh, under the foot of the oppressor and every other terminology and colloquialism and metaphor we can use to uh, describe our consistent and perpetual state of not exhibiting any form of power and it, if when you look at it, it's because we don't know and understand how things work. I've been saying that for years. Uh, it's not a catchphrase. It, 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 it's not just something to throw out there. What I'm when I'm saying that I'm saying that you can't be within a system and not understand how the system operates. You definitely cannot be in a system that impacts you and not understand how it impacts you. You cannot be in a system that's negatively impacting you in a way that makes you uh, angry and puts you in a state of rage consistently and not understand how the system operates, not understand what mechanisms and methods are being used to reach that particular end result of causing you pain, discomfort, displeasure, whatever the case may be. So then, what do you do? You sit there and you complain. You sit there and you read memes. Memes are not going to educate you. I'm sorry. It's not. You're not going to be educated by reading memes. You're not going to be educated definitely by what they post and they share 
and they stream and they broadcast from um, mainstream media. A lot of these so-called black media outlets are not going to give you what you need. They are simply uh, covered extensions of what the mainstream is. You got a bunch of black faces that don't represent the interests of black people. And again, because we don't understand how things work, we actually are easily manipulated and, 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 and mishandled by these black faces in high places. And it shows up in our frustration. It shows up in our hostility and anger, but it doesn't show up in our energy and our efforts to develop strategies, to develop agendas, to de develop uh, ideas, to work with think tanks like the Odyssey Project, the Harvest Institute, to come up with viable solutions to the enigmatic issues that we face as a collective. That doesn't drive us to that point. We are extremely comfortable with just being able to yell, scream, and talk about it, have philosophical debates about what is and what isn't, and talk about what we used to do, and rest laurels on ancient Egypt as if all of us came from ancient Egypt. Not that there aren't unbelievable civilizations outside of ancient Kemet. There are, before and after. But the idea is we just want to say we belong to something instead of creating and building something. That's the problem. We wanted to belong to their stuff until we realized getting in it and belonging to it in the sense of being in it didn't mean having any participation or control or benefit from it. Everybody's benefited from our presence of integration into their system except us. We have suffered tremendously through integration. We have lost wealth. We have lost power control. We have lost community. We have lost connectivity. Our homes have imploded. And it is because we did not understand how things work. We are going to have to actually put in some time, energy, and effort. Uh, you know, we can talk about Kyrie and what he's doing. Whether you think Kyrie is wrong or right or whatever, what I can tell you about this young man is that he's in search of something, that he's willing to put himself out there, that he's willing to catch a square and hold that square at all costs. And that's something we need our brothers to be willing to do. But we need to do it in a place, in a position that we're not just benefiting ourselves. We're not just lining our pockets. We're not just sitting up and exploiting our own people for, for money. We need to be willing to sit up and say, I'm gonna speak the truth. I'm not only going to speak the truth, I'm also going to take action. I'm going to be a practical example of what can be done. And then I'm gonna show as many people as I possibly can how I did it that is it. Then I'm going to stand guard over our women and children to give them the protection they need to be all that they can be. I am going to create a secure environment around me where it is a safe space for black growth, black development, black empowerment, black business uh, mindsets, and, and, and everything else that expands uh, our impact, our reach, and uh, progression. That has to be what we're focused on. Look at what, you know, my thing is most people are interested in what's going on with Kyrie because Kyrie represents uh, a reality that most will not experience. Kyrie is a millionaire. Kyrie is extremely rich. Uh, he enriched himself off his talents and because he has that cushion you know, Nike pull, okay, I still got the money I already have. The NBA don't want to pay me, that's fine. I got a guaranteed, I got a guaranteed salary. Whether I play or not, you owe me my money. So we if we gotta go to court and deal with that, we're gonna deal with that. It's all of these different things that make it uh 
different, but we are literally living vicariously through Kyrie and taking positions based off of uh, what he's doing and what he's going through. Or we're on the other side. We are the ones that are sitting up saying, stop, you know, making us look bad in front of these white people. You know, there's always some of some of that you know, amongst us. More worried about what white people think about us than where we are, what we're going through, who we are. And one of the most beautiful things about being uh, self-sufficient, uh, you know, working for myself, is that I don't have to worry about, in, in, in truth, what a person thinks about who I am. Now, obviously, I've got to be good at what I do. And I know I'm good at what I do. But what I'm saying is how I present myself, how I, what I believe, what I stand for is who I am. I don't have to shape that. I don't have to recontour it. I don't have to do anything to make somebody else comfortable. My thing is I don't push my beliefs on people. I find people who think like me and we share things. We work together. We build together. We grow together. We develop. That's what I do. I'm not trying to make somebody think like I think. I'm not trying to make somebody believe what I'm going to believe, but they're not going to do that to me. They're not going to sit up and say, well, you got to do this. You got to do this. They're not going to tell me what I can wear and what I can't wear. They're not going to tell me whether I can uh, have facial hair or not. They're not going to tell me uh, all of the different things. I have the gold. One thing that my first mentor, who happened to be Jewish, by the way, taught me, and man, we stayed into it because he was unbelievably frank about where my people were and why they were there. And he was absolutely right. And I stayed into it. And he absolutely loved the passion I had. He said, but that's a long journey to get to beyond where you are. But the one thing he always told me was, you are a renegade. And that, that, that word is tattooed from one shoulder on my back all the way across to the other shoulder. Renegade in big letters about this big. And underneath it says ride or die. And if you don't know what a renegade is, that's the one that pulls away from uh, the rest of the herd, the rest of the tribe. And goes out and stakes their own path, their own way. And sets their own rules. Um, there's a place for it, then there's times that it doesn't work. But what I can tell you is being a renegade it brings a certain level of liberation to where I stand and I live with my beliefs. What that means is sometimes I lose clients. I've lost a couple of big, big accounts over the last 12 years because I refuse to get off my square. I refuse to stop speaking truth about my people and it makes my white clients uncomfortable. Well, thank you. It's been great working with you. I appreciate the support and the patronage, but I'm not changing. I'm not pulling down one video. I'm not pulling down one post. I'm not printing a retraction and I will say the same thing tomorrow. If it's what I believe in, I'm going to stand on it. Nobody's going to quiet me down. Now, you may block me from your platform. You may suspend my account. But that's not me sitting up folding to you. That's you sitting up saying, I can't deal with you. So I'm just going to eradicate your presence from where you can impact me. But you haven't shut me up. You've just taken away an avenue of me being able to expand my voice. I'll put it in a book. I'll write it in an article. I'll do a tour. Whatever I got to do, I'm going to do it and I'm going to speak it. But that comes with the freedom of having your own. That comes with the freedom of being able to stand up and speak your belief. But my, my mentor told me, he said, you are a renegade. He said, and what you want to do is you want to be in the world of business at the highest level where business, white businessmen and black businessmen wear suits and ties and and, and dress shoes and are neatly cut and hair, hair cut and clean shaven. And you want to walk in uh, with a beard. You want to walk in uh, with a cap on. You want to walk in with a t-shirt and a hoodie and sneakers on. And you want to be received and, and accepted and respected. He said the vast majority of people who will sit up and hear that will tell you that that's not impossible, that's ridiculous, and that if you want to play the game, you need to learn how to play by the rules. He says, but let me tell you, there is a hack. And I said, what's that? He said, you need to get the gold. And he says, he who has the gold makes the rules. 
And he's, I said, what does that mean? He says, find wherever, whatever area of business you're going to operate in, find out what it is they want that you can provide and then become extremely good at it, become excellent at it, be very uh, astute and aware, be so well rounded in it that nobody can do it like you. And at that moment, if they want it, they've got to come through you. You have the goal. You set the stage. You determine the rules of engagement. I went and got the goal. And I've sit in boardrooms. I've had meetings with CEOs. I have CEOs as clients. I've traveled around the world. I've sat out in front of all types of people being me. So I understand what Kyrie is, but what I'm saying is that shouldn't be an anomaly. That should be every black man. That should be every black woman. That should be the boldness in every black child to be able to speak and be who they are unapologetically without trying to meet some outside external Eurocentric idea of what is, what's classy, what's professional, what's neat, what, you know, what's beautiful. Everything is shaping the idea of who you are through the lens of someone that does not represent your interests and does not come from your heritage. And you're trying to meet that standard and you'll wonder why you're frustrated, why you're being misguided and misled. You're not operating in your power. I'm not saying you need to wear a hoodie. I'm not saying anything is wrong with suits. I clean up well. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is find the place where you are best. Find the place where you feel you. And be the best you you can be at any given time. That's your, that's your journey. That's your responsibility. To be the best version of yourself. Not what someone else wants you to be. But then you also have a responsibility to understand how things work, to understand how the media is used as a, as a, a mode of manipulation and control, how you are being convinced to do things that are in opposition to your, in your best interest, and how you even believe it's your idea. You've got to understand this game. This game is played at a level that the average person doesn't even know it exists. It's They're not even aware that it's existing. That's not just black people. That's whites as well. People are literally being moved around based off of what they're consuming through their gates, their, specifically their eyes and their ears, and they don't understand it. When I want to help somebody, I'm going to access their, their gates and I'm going to flood their gates with the proper data. I'm going to create a new framework, a new concept, a new idea, a new self-image, new self-construct. Then I'm going to build up their self-esteem, eventually developing strong self-confidence and then expanding ideas of what's possible. But it begins with how much access I get to their gates. Don't you think it's happening the other way around? That negative stuff is being pushed into the gates of our, of our, our people, our children. They're destroying marriages by what they're pushing through gates. They're destroying finances by what they're pushing through gates. They're destroying the future of children by what they're pushing through gates. And we're allowing them to do it. We're chasing everything except our own to build together, to love together, to feel together, to operate in unity. The thing that scares them the most is a unified black nation. And, and we're too busy destroying one another. We're too busy seeking selfish gains. We're too busy trying to prove we're better than the next black person to see that there's something so much bigger out there. We have a responsibility. And I'm going to challenge every one of you to stand up and start to live in the fullness of your potential, to start to pursue an understanding of what's happening out there, to start to be actively engaged in changing the situation around you first, and then empowering those to go out and, and change others that's the way it has to be done. Look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. 
We want to thank you for your time. As I said at the beginning of the video, we need your support. Go into the description box and see how you can support us and give. On that note, I'm out. You guys have an unbelievable remainder of your 